Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com and welcome back to part three of my tutorial series on authentication and authorization with the Merton stack. And in this tutorial, we're going to be going over the passport part. So if you don't know, passport is authentication middleware. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually install a couple of modules. So let's open up the terminal. Let's clear this. And the first thing I'm going to install is passport. So I'm just going to say npm install passport. So this is going to be our main module. Now, the second thing I want to install is local strategy and local strategy is going to be used to authenticate against a database using your username and password. So I'm just going to type npm install passport local. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's close the terminal and we're going to install more uh, modules later. But for now, I'm going to head over to my Explorer new file. I'm going to create passport.js and we're going to require the modules that we just installed. So I'm going to type const passport and we're just going to require that. Next, we're going to require the strategy that we're going to be using our local strategy. And let's require that as well. It should be passport local. And we're going to say dot strategy because that's what we want to pull out. Now, in order for this to work, we're going to actually have to require what we did in the last tutorial. So we created this user model. So this is what we're going to be authenticating against, right? So passport is our authentication middleware. Our local strategy is how we are going to be authenticating against. So we're going to be using a username and password against a database. And remember in our previous tutorial, we created this user model. So this mongoose model, and we have our username and password here. So now we're going to have to require this into our passport file. So I'm just going to say cons user and we're going to require this. So we're going to go inside the models folder and we're going to require the user. All right. So now let's actually use this. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say passport dot use and we're going to pass in our local strategy. So I'm going to say new local strategy. And this local strategy is going to take a verify callback. So let's pass in a function here. And it's going to take in a username. We're going to get back the password. And we're also going to get a done function. So now obviously username is going to be from the client and password is going to be from the client and done is going to be as a function that's going to get invoked when we are done. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do if we are to authenticate against a database is to actually check to see if the user exists, right? So I'm going to say user. Now this is mongoose stuff. So I'm just going to say user dot find one. And we're going to find by the username. So we're going to query the database to see if this user exists. And the second thing we get back is a callback and we're going to get the error object or we're going to get the user. Okay. So if there's an error, obviously something went wrong when we tried to query this within the database. So maybe the database is down or something. So I'm just going to return the done function and we're going to pass in the error. Okay. So let's comment this. Something went wrong with database. Okay. The second thing that can happen is what happens if there is no user. So if there is no user, the client is trying to sign in to an account that doesn't exist, right? So we're just going to say return the done function. There is no error but we did not find a user. So this is going to be called if no user exists. Okay. 
Now, the last thing that this can be is we successfully found this user. So now what we need to do, obviously, if you're signing in, you found the user. Now you want to check to see if the password that they're using is correct. So we're going to come down here and we're going to say user.compare password. And we're going to pass in the password that they're trying to sign in with and the done function. Okay. So we're going to go back to our user model that we created. And you can see here that we added a function called compare password. So this is what we created. We're passing, we're accepting a, the password, which is from the client and a callback. So this callback is the done function. So here you can see that we're comparing the password from the client to the hashed password within our database. And here I already went over, if there's an error, that means something went wrong comparing passwords. So call the done function past the error object. If it's not a match, that means that the password that was supplied by the client does not match the one within our database. We call done function, there's no error, but we pass in is match, which this is gonna be false. And if there is a match, we're gonna call the done function there is no error and we're going to pass in this user object back. So that's what's happening when we're saying user.compare password. We're just passing in the password and the done function. Okay, so now let's comment this. So this is going to check if password is correct, basically. Okay, so now before we move on to JWT, so we're going to create a new strategy using JWT Passport. I want to go over what a actual JWT token is. So if we head over here, so we're going to go to JWT.io is the website. You can see that they actually give you an example of a JWT token. And on the right hand side is the decoded version of it. Okay, so this is pretty self explanatory. This is color coordinated. So this red part is going to match up here. This is the header. Now the header is going to contain the type of token it is. So here we have a JWT token. And this is going to be the signing algorithm it's using. So HS256. And you can see here that there are a bunch of algorithms to use, but that's fine for now. We come down here, the payload is basically our data. So this is gonna contain a bunch of claims in other words. So you don't have to conform to any of these claims. So you could have your claims be called whatever you want. But in this example, they have sub and sub is the subject. So who is this token for? And you would typically set this to the primary key of the user because it has to be unique. And the primary key guarantees uniqueness. Then you have the name, this could be whatever. IAT is when was this token created? And usually you would have another uh, property here called expiration. So EXP, and that would mean how long do you want this token to be good for? So in this example, they don't have that, but you could set an expiration for how long that token is valid for. So if a user signs in, you create a JWT token for that user, and then that token is good for the next 30 minutes, for example. Okay, so that's the payload. One thing I would like to point out is that this is not encryption. You see here that we have a JWT token and we could clearly see everything within that JWT token. So you might be tempted to put sensitive information within the payload. Don't. So for example, don't put the user's credit card information here. Anyone who gets access to the JWT token can read it. So never put sensitive information here. And then the third part is where the magic happens. It's the signature part. 
And the signature is made up of the header. So we had the header here. We base 64 the header. We append the period here. And then we base 64 the payload. So it's basically all this. And then we take HMAC SHA-256. And this was defined within the header. Remember, we told it to use this signing algorithm. And then it uses your to sign this JWT token. OK, so this is to prevent people from changing your JWT token. So, for example, let's say that uh, I want my JWT tokens to last for 10 minutes. Someone can modify it and say the expiration date and let's say they want it to last for an hour. Based on this signature, since it's based on the header and the payload, if they modify anything within the JWT token, it will invalidate it, okay? So that's what makes it secure, in other words. Okay, so again, um, if that wasn't explained clearly, you could go to the introduction page and it really is a short, read and what we're going to be using jwt tokens for is authorization so once the user is logged in each subsequent request is going to include the jwt token so that's what we're going to be using jwt for so let's head on back okay so now that that is out of the way let's open up the terminal again and let's install our passport JWT strategy. So npm install passport JWT. Okay, let's exit out of this and let's require it. So I'm just gonna come down here, cons JWT strategy, and we're gonna require it. Okay, so now let us actually use this. So I'm just gonna give us some space here. And I forgot to add strategy here. So let's add that. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna say passport dot use and we're gonna use the strategy. So I'm gonna say new JWT strategy. And the first thing we're going to do is pass in an options object. So the options that we're going to be using is JWT from request. And this is going to be a function called cookie extractor. And I'll explain what this is going to be doing in a second. The second option is the key that you use to sign the token. So that's going to be called secret or a key. And we're going to set that to noob coder. OK, so first we know that we need to get authenticated. So this is going to be triggered when we try to authenticate, when we sign in using our username and password. Once we are authenticated, what's going to happen is we are going to set a cookie on the client's browser and this cookie is going to be the JWT token. So what this property is saying, JWT from request, is this is the, a custom function that we're providing to extract the JWT token from the request, basically. And this secret or key is going to be used to verify that this token is legitimate. So first, let's actually create this cookie extractor function. So first, I'm just going to say cons cookie extractor. And we're going to get back the request object. And we're going to say let token is equal to null. And then if the request object is there and request.cookies is not empty, we're going to check to see if there is a JWT token there. So I'm just going to say token is equal to request.cookies. And we're going to set the cookie as a access token. So that's what we're going to call it. 
then all that's left to do is return the token. Okay. So pretty self-explanatory. All we're doing is extracting the JWT token from the request and the secret or key is going to be used to verify that that token is legitimate. Okay, the second thing is we're going to get back a verify callback. So I'm just going to say payload. And we're also going to get the done function. So remember when we went over on JWT.io what the payload is. Okay, so it's basically the data that we set within our JWT token. Okay, next is pretty common sense. So first we need to check to see if this user exists. So I'm going to say user dot find by ID. And we're going to search by the primary key. Now, remember, I told you that we usually have a claim called subject. And that subject is going to be the primary key of that user. So now what I could do is I could say payload dot sub. Okay, and we get the same callback. So we get an error or a user. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, check if there's an error. So if there's an error, we're gonna return the done function and we're gonna return that error. And we're gonna say false. Next, what we're gonna do is check to see if the user is not null. If it's not null, that means we could return that user. So I could say return done null and user. Now, the reason for being that is we've already been authenticated down here. So we do not need to check the password in case you were trying to compare the two. So we already know that this user is authenticated. Otherwise, how else would he have this JWT token to begin with? So if there's a user that goes by that ID, we pass in null for the error object and we pass the user himself. Otherwise, we know that this is false. So I'm just gonna say else, return, done. There's no error, but there is no user that has that primary key. Okay. So, Let's actually comment this. So this is gonna be used. So this middleware is gonna be used for authentication. This local strategy using username and password. So this is only gonna be used for when we log in basically. And this middleware here is gonna be used for authorization. So this is going to be used wherever we want to protect a resource. So for example, in the first video I did, I showed you our to do's. We want to protect that endpoint. And I also had a admin panel. So you would use authorization to protect the endpoints that you're interested in protecting. So this is pretty much all I want to cover for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're actually going to use these middlewares that we created. I'll see you in the next video.